Hello all, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to have a quick walkthrough of Elastic Beanstalk deployment strategies. Let's navigate to the Elastic Beanstalk on the AWS Management Console. We already have our first app version V1 application deployed in a highly available load balanced environment spanning across multiple AZs and deployed on two instances. The application environment is healthy now. Let's check the application URL and we can see the version V1 being deployed. Let's now update the application to version V2. Let's click on upload and deploy. Choose the V2 zip. You can go to the deployment preferences and in the deployment policies you can see various options supported by Beanstalk all at once, rolling, rolling with a regional badge, immutable and traffic splitting. For now, we are going to use all at once deployment, which is an in-place deployment on all the instances. Let's click on the deploy option. The deployment has started. Let's wait for the deployment to complete. Till the deployment happens, let's navigate to the EC2 instances as well. You can see no additional instances are being created. The application is still deployed on two instances. Let's wait for the deployment to complete and it's done. Let's refresh. Sometimes the AWS console doesn't reflect the changes. Let's do a hard refresh and check. And you can see the running version now has been updated to source one. Now let's refresh the application URL and you can see the version V2 has been deployed. Let's navigate back and let's upload version V3. But this time let's use the rolling with additional batch deployment policy. Let's select the v3 application let's update the version label to 3 let's modify the deployment preferences let's select rolling with additional batch rolling with additional batch you have to specify a batch size let's set it to 50 which would mean the application would be deployed on a single instance at a time given that we have only two instances running with additional batch and additional instance would also be created. Let's deploy the application now. The deployment has started. Let's quickly navigate back to the EC2 console as well to see the additional instance being created. Let's remove the instance state running filter that should show us the additional instance. And yes, you can see an additional instance now being created. The instance state is still pending. Let's wait it for to be running. Let's refresh again to confirm the instance state change. The instance state is now running. The status check is still initializing. And yes, the status check has passed. Let's test our application on the browser. We can see the version v3 being deployed. However, if you refresh a couple of more times, you will still see the version v2 being deployed as well. That's because rolling deployment performs an in-place deployment on a batch of instances. Let's wait for it to be deployed uniformly across the instances. It seems it's done and the last instance is now in the state of shutting down. This should ensure that we get a consistent v3 deployed now. And yes, a couple of more refreshes and we can see the v3 has been deployed. Let's go back to the environment, check the health. The health, as you see, is in the warning state. That's because the last instance is still shutting down. And 
let's hope the health gets back to healthy it's degraded because no data is received from one out of three instances couple of more refreshes and yes the instance is back to healthy let's perform a blue green deployment now we are going to create a new environment within the same application and deploy version v4 on it let's create a new web server environment let's have the environment name with suffix 4 let's select the same platform as language node.js the other configuration looks good let's upload our code now let's have the version label with version v4 as well let's choose file v4 and let's configure more options we're going to use a single instance just to make sure we don't incur more cost on this setup let's now configure the networking Let's select multiple AZs for the instance as well as the DB subnet group. Let's click on save. The environment configuration looks good. I think let's now create our environment. The events have started to roll on. So let's wait for the envi entire environment to be provisioned. The application has been deployed and is healthy. Let's navigate to the URL and we have the v4 deployed. Let's have the v3 and v4 side by side on the browser so we can test out the swap URL changes. Now let's navigate back to our application and the environments. Let's navigate back to our environment v4 that we just deployed. On the actions menu, you can see the swap environment URLs. Check out the warning. It says swapping the environment URL will modify the DNS and it would take some time to reflect. Let's select the environment name and click on swap. The swapping is in progress. Let's give it a couple of minutes for the swapping to complete and the DNS changes to reflect. And let's navigate back to the browser we need to keep on refreshing a bit to see the changes being reflected let's uh, refresh v4 not yet not yet and yes we can see the version v3 now being deployed on the version v4 environment let's try for v3 and yes v3 has been deployed or swapped with v4 so the blue green deployment provides an almost zero downtime solution with a quick rollback option. However, as the blue green deployment entails a DNS change, do not terminate your old environment until the DNS changes has been propagated. Let's now perform cleanup. Let's now delete our application so that we do not incur further cost on this setup. All right, that was it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can check out my website and connect me on LinkedIn and Twitter. For any feedback, please leave a comment. To see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Thank you.